Well, um, numb with shock. And um, I, I want to say, you know, in all manner of, you know, with all manner of seriousness and sincerity, that we are in dire straits, mainly because we have found ourselves in, um, in almost a, a sinkhole economically, uh, trying to get out of it. Um, you know, the, the challenges are not only daunting and enormous, but uh, almost seemingly unsurmountable. But here we are, we have a government in place, and um, what I see that is shocking, if the stories that, you know, made the headlines yesterday and probably the day before concerning the $6.2 million, you know, that was um, said to have been authorized and taken out of the CBN by, uh, with the, uh, on the instruction of the former secretary to the government of the federation, was not only embarrassing and scandalous, uh, it tells a lot on the quality that was on the table and the ways of doing business, government business. I have been privileged to work in the circle. Um, the, 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 the procedure of taking money out of the central bank by a public servant is all is known. You go to the Ministry of Finance, the permanent secretary will, will sign the documents, it will go down the line to you know, the directors, and then a letter will be given to you to the central bank. You go to a director or whoever the desk officer is, and then you will pick the money. I have done that when I was in government. Uh, there was never a time in our history that I would uh, come to believe that a public servant will just write a letter to the central bank directly, almost avoiding these checks and balances. It does not tell well on you know, our own you know, integrity as a people, as a nation, and the government. So, but, but how much question can we then ask of systems? Because different governments have come, different governments have gone. They, can they then pump their chest and say they put in systems? Because this clearly now, this loophole exists because there's a lacuna somewhere in the system and the structure. Yes, I, I think basically, and I don't want to be seen to be kind of patronizing, you know, or... or or, you know, um, patronizing or supporting uh, my brother, uh, Laji Salih Ulukman. But look, uh, the government came in when PDP was defeated in 2015. Came in, like you said, on a populist, you know, um, cult following. But then it slowly transcended into what I will call a... Um, not an oligarchy in a democracy, but something close to that, where the rules were literally, not all of it, most of it, were set aside. Quality minds were taken off the system. And anybody who seemed to have had a different view, you know, it was like you challenging Buhari, not challenging the system whenever there was a fault. But does it matter that the CBN governor was appointed by the PDP at the time? It, it doesn't. It is the attitude. It is the conduct. It is the way of doing business. Look, I was appointed, I was privileged to, be, to have been appointed the Director General of the FRCN by, um, by President uh, Goodluck Jonathan. And I was two years on. I rose from the system. I knew nothing in my entire life <laughs> apart from broadcast journalism. I rose through the system to become a DG. I wasn't politically appointed. Two years on, we were asked to go and lumped together with political appointees. And there were many of us like that. So what you had was, you know, you pull out people with, that are professionals that were to have given the government a sort of check, you know, and balance mechanism to say, no, this is not the way it is done. You are coming anew. This is how we go about it. And it was like job for the boys and anything goes. So what you see is what you get. Garbage in, garbage out. And um, I am not, I, I don't like to blame people. I like to blame systems. 
if there was a but breakdown... Isn't there people that will put in place a good system? Yes, look, like everybody said, you know, and I respect Buhari as an elder statesman. But look, um, Chamberlain, as far as I'm concerned, Buhari is history, and history will judge him, rightly or wrongly. But right now, we have a president in charge. He should step forward and take responsibility. No alibis, no innuendos, no excuses, no any of the buck passing that we are used to.